good morning, good welcome, moms and master bucks. Today we are discussing the living art lesson seven, the seven elements. Is that what it's called? Seven elements. Yep. Cool. Yep. So, so um, in stock we have the the new books are uh, in the warehouse now and shipping. So if you had them on pre order, you you expect to be getting it. Mm -hmm. um, this book is for upper elementary students. I think you could also use it for um, like a junior high or high school course for a student that doesn't have a lot of art background that you could give them a little bit of um, uh, some of the fundamentals in that of art. So um, there are two books with this set. So we have the, the student book, put it over here, mm -hmm. which uh, has the instruction and then we have an art journal which has places that they can practice and that type of thing. And one of the reasons that we split this book uh, we got this information from Kristen today. One of the reasons we, that this book was split was so that um, you could keep this book separate and in the future you would only have to buy additional art lesson books or students could, could purchase this book without having to purchase um, a much larger book for everybody. So uh, we're going to go through this uh, and also for the link for this and we'll put a link into the comments um, for the art lesson set but there's also a related options book and i'm going to go over it it's the hand that paints the sky and i was able to talk to tim about getting this book for uh it's priced at four dollars and 99 cents it would make a great morning basket book it would complement the art lessons book really well and i'll show you a little bit about that book so one of the things we're going to do in a little while if you have your kids watching because i know a lot of times the kids are around Brittany's going to do a rock, paper, scissors competition, and um, your family is welcome to participate. And, uh, and then whatever you get, rock, paper, or scissors, you're going to post in the comments. Brittany's going to choose one, uh, one of the winners that beat her in rock, paper, scissors, and we're going to give you 2,500 reward points. Wow. So... Um, yeah. yeah, we'll do that in a little bit. So and first thing. I'll also be watching the comments. So if you have any questions during this, um, feel free to chime in and I will try and, we'll try and answer. Any yes. Yet. And Jessica posted the Living Arts Set. So when you go to Living Arts Set, if you click into it down below in the related options, um, there's a, a related products. There's this uh, hand that paints the sky. And Jessica posted that too. Awesome. Thank you, Jessica. Where did you go, Jessica? All right. So first, let's start with... Do you remember how to do this? How to switch the camera over? Yes. So we're going to go to the desk cam. Ta -da. Ta -da. So we have the book, and the book is the teaches. There's seven um, elements of art that the book is teaching: lines, shapes, color, value, texture, form, and space. And so those are the seven elements that are covered through the year. Uh, in the student book, we have. Um, information to the teacher, information to the student, the basic art inform set, what would be handy for um, you to have pencil, colored pencils, crayons, uh, erasers, pencil sharpener, scissors, glue, construction paper, uh, a portfolio, a large folder envelope that you can keep the artwork in, uh, tips for the artwork, some scavenger hunt ideas, um, Nothing, nothing too extreme, really. Um, and so then it begins with observing lines, straight lines, thick lines, basic curvy lines. And the instructions are, are fairly simple, and um, they give some basic illustrations for each of the uh, components. Talks a little bit about broken lines, parallel lines, different types of lines. And then featured with each of the elements would be an artist study. And it's not real in depth, but the first one studies Picasso, and it talks about Picasso in the different periods and how, um, like cubism, how it looks like he his art was puzzles. We were studying this earlier, so we had a little bit of talk about. It, it looks like he took a bunch of puzzle pieces and you put it together in his art, and but that's it was like didn't make sense. So like yeah, yeah, like he put the puzzle together wrong. Yeah. And so it gives a little bit of information about Picasso. And then it even talks, okay, so you're going to make your own Picasso pet, which is 
like the cubism approach using the lines right. that were used. Whitney asks, what ages is this aimed towards? I would, the, the target age is um, upper elementary, four through six. Mm -hmm. So, another question? Yeah, how often are the lessons suggested? Weekly or daily? Okay, so, um, the this is the art journal that I'm looking at. I'm just going to show it alongside it. But in the beginning, we have approximately 30 to 45 minutes per lesson and two days a week. But um, some projects may, may take more days. So it's two days a week for an art course over the course of the year. Um, but you can definitely, you know, there's, there's more involved in it. Art typically wouldn't be something that would need to be five days a week. Mm -hmm. So um, two days a week is certainly enough for an art course. Okay. And so there's a supply list here, a checklist. There's a project list for everything. So um, like observing lines, jellyfish lines on week five, what you would need, white mixed paper, watercolor paint, paintbrush, oil chalk, and crayon pastels. And I would think you could buy these at your large, um, uh, what was Madam Blueberry's uh, stuff, mart? stuff Mart? You could buy it at your local Stuff Mart. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a random thought. I, I kind of like it, but it was random. It was random. Mm -hmm. But it's easier than stuff giving an endorsement for any one True. place. True. So just go to your mart. local Madam Blueberry Stuff Mart. <laughs> <laughs> So um, project, uh, yeah, so more of the project supply list and just stuff like um, clay creations and um, a little bit of detail about what type of clay to buy. And then we have the daily schedule. Now this is set up for day one and two of each week, but you can adapt this to um, any day you assign. So if right. you want to do art on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Wednesday and Thursday or whatever, you could adapt this very easily. But uh, so day one, we'd read pages four to seven, observing lines which, um, so we'll go back here to four through seven. Let's see. Oh, I think I'm in my, I'm in the wrong part of this book. Yeah. Okay. So observing lines is here. Let's see. Okay. And so we're in our lines, and the student journal um, would be very simply what's a horizontal line, what's a vertical line, what's a diagonal line, and then in the box um, to help precision. Let's see. This exercise is designed to help you not only practice drawing lines, but to help you in precision, spacing, and quality of lines. In the first box, draw five of the indicated lines. So with horizontal, you would draw one, two, three, four, five. Then vertical lines, one, two, you draw 10. Diagonal, you would draw 20 lines. And so it would be to, to just get some practice in the motor skills and practice drawing the lines diagonally. Mm -hmm. And, um, Let's see. Okay. And so that would be the idea of a daily lesson. That'd be day one, the week one, day two, again, more practice with different types of lines, line shapes, and then using line shapes with um, different pictures. Yeah. And the lessons definitely get more advanced the further you go along in the course. Yeah, it starts out with definitely something easier, like just lines right. going. And um, so, got question? My, yep. Kindy asked, she said, my almost seven-year-old first grader loves art and is asking for an art curriculum. Could this be adapted for a first grader, then go back through when she's a little older? I think you could. I mean, I think it just it, a little bit more parental involvement, kind of covering some of the the topics and, and just yeah. allowing familiarity with the elements. Yeah. I don't think it hurt. You could also, if you have an older student, just kind of like let her go with the older student, just kind of see where she picks up or if she can do it. Reading it, yep. Right. Yep. I think with any of our, with any of our courses, it's more skill levels than it is grade ranges. So right. grade ranges are good approximations, mm -hmm. but that would give you some ideas. Um, let's see. Yep. So we already covered the Picasso, create your own Picasso pet. Just well, kind of go through. E yep. There's eBooks on this as well. Yep. Um, 
let's see. So then it talks about lines in nature with some examples, um, some different things. These are the jellyfish lines that we had where it talks about creating lines with letting paint drip. Uh, and it gives, you know, for all of the art lessons, it gives a very easy step-by-step, -step, um, you know, step one, step two, step three, hold the paper, tap it so that the paint drips down from the bodies of your fish, let it dry completely before moving on to the next step. Mm -hmm. Then use oil, chalk, or crayon pastels and trace around it. Step five, create a swirly lines uh, with different shades of green and blue pastels to make your water. And so uh, very easy to follow projects and whatnot. Um, you know, yard line foil design, collect all of the needed art supplies and it has tin foil, cardboard, permanent felt tip markers, yarn, glue, tape, scissors, not anything too extreme. And then it, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And so it gives you you know, they're creating some pretty cool projects. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of materials, that is stuff that you just have at home. Like everything on that list, I'd say we have in our house right now. Yeah. So it's not super intense. Yeah. Either. And it's kind of teaching to um, the expansion of looking at nature and seeing, uh, you know, different shapes, different lines, different things that are in place. And so when you're drawing and using that, right. and the other thing is it's very hands-on. There's a lot mm -hmm. of hand-on application. Right. Uh, Carrie said, just joining, did you introduce the author already? If not, could we hear about the author? The author is um, Savannah Barclay. Barclay. And that is Angela O'Dell's daughter. Mm -hmm. And um, she has done a lot of illustrations for Angela over the years and been very artistic. And Angela is actually, I think Angela is watching as well. So. Um, and I think she's, she's married and she was actually finishing up this course. She was like in the middle of, of delivering a baby. Uh, <laughs> Cause I remember there was calls to the hospital. So uh, she was pretty dedicated to getting this out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and, it's very Charlotte Mason approach. It's shorter lessons, more hands-on, a lot of more nature studies and application, right. and then and then studies also into um, uh, into some of the artists that would have just kind of an overview. Uh, Kristen said it best. She said it's a great fundamentals of art course. It gets, introduces you to the fundamentals, and and gives you an acquaintance with each of those. So. Um, also, hi, Caitlin Davis. Thank you so much for joining us for your first time. It's her first time she lives in Alaska. That's cool. Is it cold in Alaska right now? I imagine. I it would is. imagine it's getting there. Know, probably. Yeah, probably. We don't know. But thank you for joining us. It's great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, positive and negative shapes, um, perspectives. I'm just kind of going through uh, Van Gogh, and so a little study about Van Gogh and how he used contrast and art and, and the different coloring with his work. Uh, then they create a Van Gogh type work and um, shapes in nature. Let's see, using shapes to draw pictures, uh, people in proportions. So some very basic um, introductions to the concepts. Um, a scavenger hunt looking for shapes, then uh, potato prints. Those are kind of cool actually designing um, stamps out of potatoes. So again, here's your supply list. Here's the, um, the information, step one, step two. Uh, there's two different methods you could use. Step yeah, four. The steps are nice because they're all like pictured out, so you don't have to guess as to what you're doing. There's pictures to go with the steps. Yes. Okay. Oh. Aubrey is calling. What so. would a live be without Aubrey calling every <laughs> single time? Yeah. So I'm looking the skate the some of the. Um, like as we're going through the the shapes there's different lessons teaching them how to connect lines um putting together like you know different concepts of of working with shapes and lines 
the the um oh what was it called all right i could use a little more introduction to the art the positive hi, and negative shapes sorry i'm just interjecting hi cassie from utah yeah <laughs> Again, right? It's in a minute. We're going to do rock, rock paper, paper scissors. Rock paper scissors for the reward points. Yes. And so here's here's a project like human proportions with a man, and then they would actually complete the other half, and just gives them some, um, you know, for an upper elementary student who's who's really still in the process of developing hand skills and and motor skills, but also the introduction. So lines, shapes. We move to colors. And then, so on the color side, let's see, with primary, secondary, tertiary, does that sound right? Sounds right. I don't know what the last word was. T-E-R, no. tertiary. Say, I'm going to say that sounds that. right. Warm and cool colors, <laughs> complementary colors. And so it introduces them to colors and color making. Um, you have blue, green, green, blue, blue, purple, purple, blue, based on which one has more. And so it starts mm -hmm. introducing them to all of the how to make new colors and the variations, what right. a warm color, cool color. Questions? Yeah, Carrie said, is the student journal essential or could the student use a typical art sketch pad? I wasn't sure if the assignments are also written in the main text. The assignments aren't in the main text. No, no. There's, there's projects in the main text, but the art journal um, – gives them, it actually gives them a place for application. I would recommend the art journal. Now, they would also do it on their own, but I would recommend both. Hi, Lisa from North Carolina. Good to see you. So, um, some introduction to the Arfani portrait, iconic 15th century artist Jan van Eck, with how they used red and green, an impression sunrise by Claude Monet, um, would be um, how they use the blue and orange and just showing them the primary colors that were used in the art. Lisa said we did pronounce tertiary right. Awesome. Awesome. That's good because you never know how I'm going to pronounce something. Thank you um, for verifying. Yes. Uh, Norman Rockwell, a study of Norman Rockwell and how he used um, color, colors in nature. Heather asked, will this be too easy for a ninth grader? Yes, I would say well, the thing about art is you can make it as complicated as you want, right? So you can just be practicing. So once you learn the basic elements, then you could practice. And so you could do more than that. Right. Um, I would say it probably depends on how into art your ninth grader is. So if he or she is more advanced, then this is probably too basic for them. But at a basic level, like this is the fundamentals of art. Right. And if you, if you actually require a little bit more from them, right? So this is designed for upper elementary where they're not going to have as much control and that type of thing. But if you actually said, okay, you're at a ninth grade level. So at this point, we're learning this stuff, put a little bit into it. So mm -hmm. I see that the projects that you're doing actually look like a ninth grade level instead of a fourth grade level. Um, you know, you're looking at, at that. I think skills are going to be introduced are going to be pretty close to the same. They may be, if you're in another or you've used other art programs, they may be developing more complex things. Um, it really kind of depends, I think, too, on, like you say, how much the student has had in the past. Right. So, yeah, here they're going to do a contrast of colors. I think this is a really cool project. They draw their tree. You have the warm colors and the cool colors. And so it goes through all the steps of how to do a warm color, cool color. And this is something where you could definitely see a ninth grader's picture and it should be done. Um, you know, if they put something into this, it would be a pretty decent project. Yeah. Um, and then observing the values, uh, experimenting with value in a lesson on shading. And so you can see how, you know, an example, red, one drop of white paint, another drop of white paint, another drop of white paint, and how the values change pink. to get pink. Yes. And so we begin learning about shading. A study in Mary Cassette. Cassat, Cassat. Um, Brittany Cassatt. spelled the right way. Woohoo. Asks, are there a lot of projects to go with the lessons? 
There are, yeah, I would say there's, with the lessons, there's at least one project for every lesson. But so there's some hands-on right. practice and then and then a project. But I don't think they're not like super, like not everyone is super involved. No, but it's appropriate. Right. Yeah, like like the contrast of warm and cool colors. I mean, that's where the the lessons are two days, but they could easily be working on a project throughout the week. They could be coming back to it and working on their project. Right. Um, Chase Melissa Rampey asks, is this a full year curriculum? Yes. The schedule is based on um, a 36 week, 180 day schedule, even though there's, it's 36 weeks, two days a week um, is, is how we would say that. Right. Good question. Yep. Okay. No, I, I, was, no, question. no I was still letting her know it was a good question. Okay. So then we're going to study texture. And so it moves from colors into textures. And they begin experimenting with different textures. Um, let's see, a study from on John James Audubon. Trivia fact, I used to work on John James Audubon Parkway. So just so you know. That's, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Kimberly, she said, I want this for my 10 year old. He's a natural artist, but I am not and I have no idea to how to help him develop his sound further. I think it'd be a fun course to do with your student, honestly, because it's, I mean, you could learn the basic fundamental elements of art. I think it'd be a fun one to do um, with your student. Yeah. My two cents. Yeah, if you didn't have a lot of artsy and you wanted to have a time that you guys did something that was just kind of fun together, right? Doing it as kind of a project time yeah. together would art be art is a fun a thing to do idea. with people because art is like it's messy. There's no boundaries. It's just like so. Brittany is our artistic student. Like when we moved into our house, um, the um, she actually like painted a lion mural on the wall. It was the ugliest color of blue the wall was but she painted this really cool line. It was kind of how she expressed herself. And so there's this finger painted, hand painted lion that looks awesome, but now we can't paint the blue <laughs> the wall because we don't want to paint the wall. So I was just bored. We have I didn't this, think it would turn out. We have this really ugly blue wall in this room, but the lion on it is awesome. So, okay. Uh, Angela wanted me to show animal illustrations. Randy, show the illustrations of the animal. She probably didn't say it like that, but that's how I'm going to interpret it. You're going to interpret it. She said it kind she of grumpy. Kinda, she just, yeah, she like yelled it. Yeah, I'm thinking, value nature. I'm thinking she's talking about the. She said those are sketches that Savannah did in the nature study as a teen. Okay. These are, I'm assuming, these are the sketches mm -hmm. that Savannah, the author, did. And, um, and then it walks them through actually creating, I think I saw, creating their own. Mm -hmm. Audubon. Okay, so then there's different options. Yeah, so they can create their own sketch. And I believe Angela can confirm this, but I think these sketches of each of the artists were also done by Savannah. I think so. Um, Barry Chris Aruda. I'm going to, I said that wrong, but I made it dramatic. So Aruda. I think you need to twirl your tongue when you do that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Aruda has other suggestions for outside resources. To... <laughs> now I'm rolling my tongue. Outside resources to study things more in depth. Um, there are not in here that I'm aware of. Uh, I think it's more just what's in the course is self-contained. And if there was, I would encourage you that if you saw something that the student was really interested in doing some more research, there's so many places to go. It's really hard outside of our curriculum to make recommendations mm -hmm. because especially in a course like art, it could go south so fast. Naomi said, just when I think I'm set with my curriculum for the year, you guys throw another awesome course out there. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're here for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, texture scavenger hunt, making puffy paint. Caitlin Davis, I think she was the one that's here oh, for the first puffy time. Paint. She said, is there a list of supplies and brands I'll need to get? There is in the beginning of the book, I'm pretty sure. And then for each project that you have, it does go over again. The yeah, it gives a supply list. Like right here, you need puffy paint, plastic squeeze bottle, a clean honey bottle will work or a Ziploc baggie. Uh, scissors, if using a Ziploc bag, funnel, 
and then mixed media sketch pad. Is that also paper. in like, is there like a master list in the beginning? Um, there was in the artist journal. There is a master list. We tried to be real sensitive about that. So there's a supply list here. And then um, a the, every week for the supply list, there's also like um, what's needed, cardstock, white school blue scissors. So you would know like a week ahead of time what information would be needed. Allison asked, will there be an art course for younger students in the future? Um, we don't have it on the on the docket right at the moment, but it is something that um, we're looking at filling in gaps really everywhere now. So um, I would say in the future, yes, but there isn't one slated. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So doing some water lilies using tissue paper. Okay, and so observing form and experimenting with form, more on shading and shadows. And so it, you see how it gets much more complex where we started with just lines, shapes, now we're moving into 3D shading and shadows and, and using the different um, components that are found right. in those. Starting to make the art come alive now. Yep, a study on Michelangelo. Then actually creating a wire sculpture. These were actually kind of cool when they yeah. created them. Yeah, they sat down and the, they were in the break room for a little while. They were kind of cool. Our art department actually did like all these art projects and so, um, and then, and then uh, took pictures of it. So it was kind of cool yeah. watching um, adults do these projects. It was kind of cool. I don't know, you probably, I don't know if it's further up ahead, but the hamburger and the ice cream. Yeah, there it is, the next page. Okay, so we're gonna make a hamburger and ice cream. Collect the ingredients. So it's four cups of flour, one teaspoon of alum, one and a half cups of salt, one and a half to two cups of water, a mixing bowl, and a resealable plastic so bag. So this sat down in the break room for a little while. Oh, that's cool. So they actually make and paint their yeah. own sculpture of a hamburger. And I think they saved the ice cream bowl. It's in Laura, our lead editor. It's in her office right now on her shelf. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So Random they, fun fact. So for a fourth, fifth, or sixth grader like your brother's ages, mm -hmm. they would love oh, yeah. a project like that. It's like not that intense. A Making a cheeseburger. Yeah. Um, Heather asks, is Christian content throughout this curriculum? It is. Um, there is Christian content in the curriculum. It's all designed to point towards um, God's creation and looking at um, – his creation. Mm -hmm. uh, the book that I'm going to show after we do rock, paper, and scissors, which is coming up in a minute, uh, is I'll show you that would be a great supplement as well to right. add a lot to yeah. it. Um, we asked what skills are prerequisites. I said I can't say that word. I try so many times. Prerequisites. <laughs> no. I don't think there are any because you would be developing right? So, I mean, you're learning to do lines. You're learning to make shapes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Art is messy. That's for me, because I'm so perfectionistic, learning that art is messy, it became an outlet for me to kind of, like, that was one thing that I didn't have to, like, stay in the lines for. Art is messy. And that's you can what make makes mistakes. Fun. Right. Yeah. And if not, call it a Picasso. Exactly. Yeah. I am a Picasso. So we're studying, let's review the elements, line shapes, colors, values, textures, form, and space. And so illustrations of space. And so you can see it's not an overwhelming um, course, but by the time a student finished this, they would have a great, um, a great introduction to the fundamentals of art and even some hands-on. They would understand some very um, different concepts. Right. So let's switch over to the first camera. Okay, back. are we ready? If you're ready to do rock, paper, and scissors, now, you have to be honest. Yeah, don't say you won if you didn't actually win. So Brittany's going to do rock, paper, scissors. She's going to put hers down. out. And Best then, of three. The mouse died? No, I was putting the oh. mouse up because okay. I've had it in my lap. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so okay. she's going to do it. I'm going to sit. It's the best of three. Back. Best of three. How does that go? That means you do it three times? Yeah, if you win more than I do. Okay. Or do you just want to do one? Do one and then they put it up. Okay. 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 Just one. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready? Are you ready? 
Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. She got the scissors. What beats? Well, put down what you got and in everything. What beats? Scissors beats paper. Rock beats scissors. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you did rock, you beat me. So let me know. Rock, paper, scissors because it's artsy. Paper, scissors, you know. That was pretty clever. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Clever. I just came up with that. That wasn't why we did it. Okay. Oh, Alicia got rock. Got rock. Jessica, we tied. There are some Lacey, ties. Paper. I cut your paper, Lacey. Sorry about that. All right. So while you're looking at that, I'm going to um, the hand that paints the sky. We actually used to, as a publisher, they call these um, coffee table books. And uh, this used to be very popular. Uh, you go to the bookstore and you get these books that you would have, you know, laying on a coffee table or whatnot. This book is a very special book, The Hand That Paints the Sky. Can you switch it over to the to the table? I can. Awesome. I'm still reading through comments, so keep letting us yeah, know. Yeah, keep letting us know what you got. And she's going to pick someone here when I'm done showing the preview. Um, so The Hand That Paints the Sky, actually Joni Erickson Tata, if you know her, um, she's famous for a lot of things, but her art is something that um, she was popular for. And one of the things that she, you know, she wrote the introduction to this and it talks about before she starts any art project, um, what she'll do is just sit and observe it and, and spend a lot of time just looking at it, trying to understand the nuances and the, you know, the lines, the shapes, the colors, these things. And so um, I, as I saw this book in the warehouse, I thought, man, what a great compliment to this art course because this really, this book points to God as the ultimate artist. And this would be a great morning basket resource. It'd be just a great art supplement, a devotional. Um, as you talk about all of and the images and what God did on the first day, the second day, and um, there's cool quotes in here. Um, inspiration of God's breath taken into ourselves. God wants to breathe his creative life into us through the inspiration of his Holy Spirit. Janice Alzheimer, the creative call. And there's, there's different quotes in here by different authors. Um, art is not what you see, but it's what other, it's what you make others see. Um, Edgar Dager, all these last names, I'm choosing really good stuff to, and so there's a lot of cool um, scriptures and quotes that go along with it, but there's good representation of, you know, the art and the images and the way color is used, lines, shapes, different things like that that you'd use to really add as a supplement to the art journal. And like I say, for um, $4.99, this would be a great addition to, to complement this course yeah um, so there's uh the heavens declare the glory of god the skies proclaim the work of his hands um if we are to even attempt communicating good in our art we must push out beyond our bent understanding of it and draw from the depths of god's character from ned bustard that's just a it's a cool book and we we've sold a ton of this book in the past um especially back when, you know, you'd set that on a coffee table. And so people would come to your house and you'd see a book like that. And they'd be like, Ooh, they're kind of artsy. Right. I like how to like one of the um, elements I think is texture. Yeah. Um, and the pictures are just so brilliant. Like the texture in there is like a great example. Even stuff like shapes to look at the shapes that would be present here. How right. could you, how could you break down a picture into different shapes? And just having those kind of talks with your student, um, really cool. You said this looks like a great art introduction course. And again, that's not a required element for the art course. No, no, this is just a book that we can switch it back. Um, this is just a book that we have that we've published. And and as I was going through the warehouse, I was like, man, that would just make such a good compliment 
to the art journal. So it's it was posted, Jessica posted it, and it's also uh, listed as an option to the art course. So if you're looking for a good fundamentals to art course for upper elementary, or even just like Brittany said, maybe a course that you could do with your students is just a way to connect and, right. and learn about the elements and, and kind of bring yourself up to speed on what it is they're talking about, yeah. uh, it would be great. Tony, uh, she said, I wonder if your student isn't up for an outside scavenger hunt because of bad weather or something. You could use this book for that. You definitely could. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Because there's every nature aspect you probably need is in that. Unless, I mean, you need physical leaves or something for the project. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. I, well, you could still find. You could right. still find. So, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully this gave you some insight into the art course. We're really excited about it. Um, really appreciate Savannah. Um doing this project and uh and angela as well bringing it to our attention um we love the we love that it's not overwhelming but it really does introduce you to the concepts right. and you have somebody who beat you i do have somebody who beat me next week i'll get you though um i'm gonna this week's winner will be pete and shelly condor so if you're still in there say hey so we can say congratulations um and then yeah maybe we'll do it again next week because a lot of people beat me. <laughs> you have to uh, score yeah. to settle. And let us know if you like doing a game. I don't know. Yeah. I think it was fun. We brought Brittany in to add a little color because Brittany adds a lot of color. I was like, do you really actually want me in here? Because I like go off on all these little bunny trails and like interject things. I'm like, I don't know that you actually want me doing this with you. <laughs> um, Chelsea asked, when will the pre-orders be shipped? The pre-orders are being shipped right now. There, I saw boxes this morning, and I think yesterday there were boxes going out. So they're, they should be en route. So, yep. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, hey, have a blessed week, and um, we will see you hopefully on Thursday. And uh, yep. talking about creativity and how to inspire your children with creativity, which goes really well into the art course. So, all right. God bless you. Have a good week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.